What's up everybody, it's Yvonne with Trout's Fly Fishing, here with head guide Scott Dixon. Spent the day here on uh, the South Platte for uh, Five Flies for February. I do want to say, personal apology to everybody, uh, I got sick earlier this month and wasn't able to put out Five Flies in the, in the normal time, so my apologies for that. I hope this uh, comes in a timely uh, portion of your fishing month and uh, still find value in it, so yeah, February. February five flies. February and, five uh, flies. What what what's going on in February? What what can we look forward to? Uh, midges and also you're looking at stuff that's going to be good attractors patterns. Um, so today one of our flies is the guy's choice here's here, but crane fly larvae, leeches, stone flies, eggs, uh, anything that will get the trout's attention, and then drop in some smaller stuff down below it. Yeah, usually works out pretty well for sure. So. Red midges are going to start to play a bigger role here in February. Uh, Stoneflies are molting, so uh, you know, bigger bugs are going to get the job done. Yeah, uh, and a lot of times those bigger bugs will also just help get those flies down lower in the water column. Right. Um, a lot of these fish, especially this time of year, cold water temps, they're not uh, super active, so they're kind of hunkered down by the bottom. And using those large uh, lead flies will just help it uh, get down there to where the fish are feeding. This is a leap year, isn't it? This is a leap yeah, year. Yeah, so we get an extra day of February, which is extra day. my favorite. Yeah, me too. Right. But basically, we're in March. We, so we basically made it through winter time. Basically have. Right. So At uh, the end of February, we're into spring. We're into and spring. And things start to liven up, and you know, it's going to become a little bit more dynamic. Absolutely. That's as so. positive and negative. Positive and negative. Right. But uh, this time of year, uh, today was a little bit cold, but 30 degrees out. Beautiful day in February. Great day to get out fishing. A little snow on the ground, happy fish. Gotta love it. Okay. All right, there we go. Let's talk about five flies for the month of February. A fly number one is the size 14 Guide's Choice Hair's Ear. Scott, why do you love that fly? Uh, the Guide's Choice Hair's Ear is a great fly. It has a little weight to it that helps it get down. Uh, great lead fly, dropping other smaller flies off it. But this time of year when some of the stone flies start to molt uh, or shed their exoskeleton, uh, having that soft tackle on there, it just looks really buggy. And a lot of times they'll swim right out of that and those fish uh, tend to dig it. Yeah, so they're like shedding their exoskeleton and getting kicked free. They're gonna be a lot more prevalent in the water column. You can, I mean, clearly they're there year round. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not something that just happened just in February. Happened, right, just happened in February. Yeah. But you do see it February and March. Yes. Uh, you tend to see those stoneflies molt a little bit more and become a better food source on you know, places like the South Pole, but also maybe Arkansas and the Colorado and the Eagle and stuff like that. So. Absolutely. Yep. Fly number one, bingo. Guys, sure say. Fly number two for February is a fire red pure midge in size 22. Um, again, with a lot of midges out here right now this time of year, uh, and that's a major food source for the trout. And that uh, fire red, it just, fish can see it, they go after it, they eat it. Uh, I don't know what it is about red, but uh, a lot of these fish out here, uh, when they see it coming by, it can't resist. It pops. It pops. It pop. It pops the sand salad on the water. Right. Here we go, fly number two. Yeah. All right, fly number three is going to be the Black Beauty, a classic in uh, size 22 in black. Scott, why do you like the Black Beauty? Uh, fish eat the Black Beauty. That's one of the main reasons why it's I like it. It's a good reason to like a fly. It is. It's yeah. a great reason to like a fly. Yeah. But uh, looking in the river, turning over rocks, uh, getting the seine out, what you see are a lot of real tiny black midges. And that black beauty, it's pretty uh, simple, basic pattern, but it imitates the food source that's out there and uh, fish go crazy for it. Good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Fly number three. All right, fly number four is the Morgan's Midge, size 22. A dry fly, we didn't get to fish any dry flies today. No but, dry flies today. But, but it's uh, still something that we uh, expect to see through February when the, the conditions are right. Yep, and we were seeing quite a few adult midges on the water today flying around. You could see them on the snow banks and stuff. Uh, just didn't see any fish looking up for them. But that Morgan's Midge, 
It is, uh, has a little flash on the tail, a little CDC puff right up on top. Uh, looks just like a midge out there. So it's a fly to use in February. Yeah. How would you dress that fly? Uh, CDC fly, what do you like to use for floating? I usually use a dry shake on it. Yeah, so go to. Go to. Yeah. I use dry shake on everything, but I'll put a quill on it, some sort of other floating, but yeah, I'm a dry shake. Yeah. There we go, fly number four. Dry shake Magoo over here. Yeah, <laughs> it works. It does, I agree. Keep some Line number five is the Tungsten RS2, a new addition to the RS2 lineup. Yes, so the Tungsten RS2, uh, can't say enough about the RS2. It catches fish everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but that Tungsten RS2, a lot of times I'll have it as my middle fly and trail a smaller midge below it, but it just helps it get down with that little tungsten bead on the top, helps it sink, get lower in the water column, um, but all fish love RS2s. Yeah. Typically RS2s are a merger and you don't necessarily want them all the way at the bottom, but uh, you know, with fish being a little bit more sluggish during the winter time, it makes sense to get it down and maybe trigger trigger that fish when they see what looks like an emerging insect down at that you know, lower portion of the water column. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So it does get down, and um, but bouncing along uh, down low through the holes, uh, fish will see it and they'll go for it. Here we go, fly number five. Appreciate you guys tuning in for uh, Five Flies for February. Um, you know, with every day we're gonna see, in February we're gonna see a little bit more sun, uh, which means fish are gonna start getting a little bit happier. They're gonna start w waking from their winter slumber. It's a great month to get out in the water. Uh, certainly appreciate Scott joining us. Always showing us Glad where all the fish are. Always fun time to get out on the water, so. Indeed, indeed. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate you uh, giving it a watch. We'll see you in the next one. All right, you can see it online. Uh, stop by the shop. Uh, stop by a Frisco shop as well, and uh, we'll see you out on the water. For sure. Bingo. So as it's becoming tradition, whenever Scott's on Five Flies, he's going to share a guide joke. We had a special visitor today during the shoot, Cat. Cat wanted you to bless us with a guide joke, so hit us with a good one, Scott. Okay, uh, let's see. How about this one? Uh, what does the clock do once it gets hungry? I have no clue. It goes back four seconds. That's pretty good. Classic. Yeah. I laughed. I laughed inside. <laughs> <laughs> I can respect the clock that's hungry though, you know? Yeah. So, there we go, guide joke of uh, for five flights for February for, from old Scott. <laughs>